Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video here on my channel. Just want to say very quickly, I'll keep this brief. If you are subscribed to Basketball Cinema, you've been rocking with my channel here for any length of time. It really doesn't matter. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I know I've neglected this channel for a big part of the last five to six months. I won't go into details. It's just been a crazy busy time in my life, which is why. Yeah. Anyways, I'm making excuses and I shouldn't. I am committed though from this point forward to trying my best to make consistent NBA content. I've got a lot of great ideas. I'm super passionate about it. So if you are watching this video, please uh, consider subscribing. If you're not already, continue to check out the content here on this channel. But as I develop some new ideas, guys, I want to give you a heads up that this video you're about to see and a couple more over the next couple weeks on my channel. These are videos I made in the past. You might have seen them on my main channel. Uh, this might be the second time you're seeing that. If it is that case, I am sorry, but I hope you still enjoy. I'm trying to create some momentum on the channel. So I figured uploading something is better than nothing. And again, plenty of new ideas and new content coming very soon on the channel. So whether you've seen this video already or not, I really hope you enjoy because I think it's a banger. And the dream season is now complete. The Golden State Warriors are the 2015 NBA champions. A dream season indeed for the Warriors as a whole, and specifically Steph Curry. The former Davidson standout won his first of two regular season MVPs during the 14-15 season. And as far as counting stats go, he took his game up another notch or two during the first three rounds of the NBA playoffs. The finals matchup with Cleveland was supposed to be a classic, with LeBron on one side having returned home after his Miami hiatus, and the upstart Warriors chucking a million threes playing small ball on the other side. Game 1 was the perfect teaser for what we hoped the series would become, as overtime was needed after LeBron missed long on a potential game winner. Oh wow, I'm just now realizing the multiversal shift that could have occurred if LeBron had just hit that shot in Game 1 of the 2015 Finals. I mean, injuries could have been avoided, um, series would have been different, free agents might not have signed places. Okay, well, that's a discussion for a different day. Um, I'm just gonna make a note of it though. Kyrie Irving would go down to a knee injury in overtime and miss the remainder of the series. Remember, Kevin Love was already out of the playoffs by this point, and so the narrative of the entire series shifted. Despite Steph showing out with 26 points and eight assists in his finals debut, all eyes turned to LeBron James, as folks wondered if he could backpack the Cavs without his wingmen. And for a minute, yeah, he actually did. LeBron went hero mode for the Cavs in games two and three, and Cleveland took a 2-1 series lead. The shock of seeing James carry such a load led many folks in the media, and some fans of course, to start calling for LeBron to win finals MVP regardless of the series outcome. Meanwhile, Steph Curry had what would be his worst finals performance ever. I mean seriously, he was awful in game two of the 2015 finals, there's no sugarcoating it. The MVP would score just 19 points with 6 turnovers and shot 5 of 23 from the field. Sorry, what was that? 5 of 23! Oh, that's bad. What's worse than the performance from Curry was, of course, the narrative that was birthed as a result of it. See, when Kyrie Irving went down to injury, the Cavaliers were forced to turn to Matthew Della Vadova at point guard. Delhi had started just 13 games during the regular season, and if we're all being honest, he wasn't a very good NBA player. But because Steph shot like a villain in a 1980s action movie during Game 2 missing everything, the NBA media collectively chose to view Matthew Della Vadova as quote, a Steph Curry stopper, even though that was pretty far from the truth. My Guy Legend of Winning actually made a super interesting deep dive video on the 2015 finals, which I highly recommend, in which he concluded, This concept that Della Vadova locked up Stephen Curry is nothing more but propaganda that ESPN was pushing at that time that still is getting carried over to this day. The narrative that LeBron should have been MVP win or loss and that Steph Curry was clamped has completely warped how we look back on the 2015 finals. After the Cavs took a 2-1 series lead, Steve Kerr would insert Andre Iguodala into the starting lineup and the Warriors would subsequently win three straight games to clinch the title. LeBron saw his numbers take a hit during the latter stages of the series 
Combined with some reasonably impressive counting stats, NBA media would eventually conclude that Iguodala's contributions to winning were in need of recognition. Andre Iguodala won the 2015 Finals MVP award 7 votes to 4, with LeBron receiving 4 votes. Steph Curry didn't receive a single vote. But here's the facts. Over the final three games of the series, those three games that were shifted entirely by Andre Iguodala, we'd be led to believe, Steph Curry went 28, five and six per game on 65% true shooting. Beyond those counting stats, in a pivotal game five at Oracle Arena with the series tied at two, Steph dropped 37 points, seven rebounds on 13 of 23 shooting. With his team trailing by one with just under eight minutes remaining, Steph would put Curry stopper Della Vadova Curry into a blender, back. reclaiming a Warriors lead on a step back three. Golden State would never trail again during the game, and that three was part of a 17 point fourth quarter explosion for number 30, giving the Warriors a 3-2 series lead, extinguishing most, if not all hope left for the Cavaliers. But I thought, no, wait, no, that, that can't be true. I was told as recently as like two weeks ago that Steph Curry has never had a legendary performance in the NBA Finals. It's over! It's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! Yeah, okay, so where I was able to successfully lobby everyone in favor of Steph Curry's greatness during the 2015 finals, I'm not gonna try that for 2016. We all know the story like the back of our hand. The 73 and 9 Warriors go up three games to one. Draymond gets suspended, Cleveland storms back, game seven, LeBron block, Kyrie shot, Kevin Love clamp. Steph Curry was simply not good during the 2016 NBA Finals. After winning the regular season MVP unanimously in one of the most dominant offensive runs we've ever seen, Curry saw his numbers begin to trail off in the West Finals before cratering in the Finals. Now, to be fair, Curry did drop a heavy 34 points in Game 4 to give his Warriors a commanding 3-1 series lead, but it's hard to take solace in that strong performance considering what was to follow. Since 2016, the Steph Curry hive has never let us forget that Steph played injured during the 2016 Finals. Or, you know, probably was playing injured. Warriors GM Bob Myers would cryptically say following the series about Curry, quote, I don't know if hurt is the right word. It was probably fatigued or drained, something to that measure more than hurt. Steph himself told us, on the court even, that he was recovered from an MCL injury he suffered in round one of the playoffs. Remember when he yelled, I'm back for all the world to see? He would later admit to not being completely himself when he said, quote, I wasn't 100%, but who cares? I was playing. Which is what I've always held on to when judging Steph's performance in the 2016 finals. He was out there. After his explosive Game 4 performance I referenced moments ago, Steph would follow up with 25 points in Game 5 and 30 points in Game 6. Not necessarily horrible on the surface, even considering his lofty standards. However, focusing the lens to the fourth quarter of both those games tells a different story. Steph would score just 12 points combined on 5 of 14 shooting during the fourth of games 5 and 6. All of these struggles of course came to a head in game 7, wherein Steph Curry would produce a measly 17, 5, and 2 on 6 of 19 shooting. Additionally, he had just 3 points on 1 of 6 shooting and one very ugly turnover in the fourth quarter. Steph would justifiably get roasted by fans and media for his performance in the 2016 finals. Steph Curry came up even smaller than he really is. But while I understand the sentiment in the moment, Skip and others have never stopped using that failure to assail the rest of his resume. He displays no clutch gene. He disappeared in games five, six, and seven of the 2016 finals when they were up three games to one. At the end of the day, Steph Curry wasn't the first NBA legend to have a poor final showing, and I'm guessing that he won't be the last. Should one poor performance in the NBA finals mar the way we view Steph, or any other player for that matter, for the rest of time? Prior to the 2016-17 season, the Warriors landed future Hall of Famer Kevin Durant in free agency when he made the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar, plain and simple. Powered by their new Big Four, the Warriors absolutely steamrolled the Western Conference to the tune of 67 regular season wins and a perfect 12-0 record in the playoffs. Well, that's a little unfair. By this point in the Warriors cycle, it was essentially a foregone conclusion that they'd win the title. 
despite having a loaded Cavalier side waiting for them in the finals. Also by this point, as a result of his anticlimactic play in 2016 and the collective brainwashing that took place from 2015, there was of course a narrative in place that Steph Curry needed to finally deliver on the biggest stage. No, seriously. In a finals prediction article, Tim Bontemps, now of ESPN, would write, quote, Everything is set up for this to be the moment Curry finally delivers on the biggest stage. My guy really said finally. I just... Yeah. During the 2017 NBA Finals, Steph Curry would produce 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists per game on 62% true shooting. Unfortunately, we still had zero evidence of if Steph Curry would get it done on the big stage. Because... You know, he didn't win finals MVP, duh. Kevin Durant was simply spectacular for the Warriors, as he rightfully took home MVP honors after dropping a stupidly efficient 35 points a game and the infamous series dagger over LeBron in Game 3. It's worth mentioning here too that Steph had an off game in Game 4, scoring just 14 points on 4 of 13 shooting, where Durant managed to eclipse 30 points in all 5 games. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, don't shoot the messenger, but yep, KD did deserve MVP in 2017, I'm sorry. The Warriors dynasty was nearly derailed during the 2018 playoffs. You all remember the 27 missed threes game by the Rockets, right? Anyways, by good fortune or sheer greatness, the Warriors would advance past the Rockets with both their stars once again firing on most, if not all, cylinders. For the fourth consecutive season, LeBron James and the Cavaliers were waiting to face the Warriors in the NBA Finals, although this time around it was a much weaker Cavs side. That was evident in the discussion leading up to the finals, which was centered around two topics, how the Warriors needed to slow down LeBron and not much else, as well would Steph Curry finally win his finals MVP. It doesn't make or break my career or whatever you want to say looking back. If we win this championship and I don't win in finals MVP, I'm going to be smiling just as wide. On the surface, the 2018 finals needs but a very quick discussion. LeBron and the Cavs threw one mighty punch in Game 1, but came up short, and Golden State would eventually dispatch them in a sweep. Once again, Steph Curry was great in the Finals, 28-6-7 averages on 56% true shooting, but as is tradition, he had one poor outing, this time Game 3, in which he notched just 11 points on 3 of 16 shooting. Now, Steph was phenomenal in the other 75% of the series, scoring 29, 33, and 37 points. He actually outscored KD in three of four games. For the Steph doesn't show up in big moments crowd, he also had an answer for that in game one. But they don't have defenders in. Curry drives, count it, and one! Curry off the glass! Unfortunately for the masses who were prepared to coronate Steph, Kevin Durant once again threw a perfect game. KD averaged a shade under 29 points a game on 65% true shooting, and once again hit the series dagger Kevin late Durant, in Game outside. 3 as part of a 43-point masterpiece. Even KD's low scoring night of the series resulted in a 20-point triple-double in Game 4. Long story short, the Finals MVP really could have gone either way in 2018. Curry's poor performance in Game 3 combined with Durant's explosion, I mean that clearly swayed things in his favor. Since this moment, debate has carried on endlessly regarding the question of who was truly more valuable to those Warriors teams, Steph Curry or Kevin Durant. I don't want to jump too far down that rabbit hole and will simply offer, I was rooting against the Warriors during the stretch, I was rooting for LeBron, and I was never like more scared of Steph or Kevin Durant. It was the both of them. It was this unstoppable, overpowered unit that the Warriors were together. Regardless of whose gravity affected whose or who faced more double teams, I just, this discussion, they were so great together. That's it. I do agree that Steph Curry has always carried a unique gravity based on his deadly off-ball movement and shooting ability. I mean, look no further than the 2015 finals we discussed earlier. Andre Iguodala won finals MVP, and by game six, the Cavaliers were willingly not defending him because they were so terrified of Curry. But Kevin Durant averaged 32 points a game on 68% true shooting in the 17 and 18 finals combined. It's true, KD wasn't quite that lethal next to Russell Westbrook but I fear the narrative has shifted a bit too far in a pro-Steph, anti-Durant manner to discredit Kevin's contributions to the Warriors' dynasty. Anyways, we know, the Warriors dominated the NBA. Picking between Durant and Curry and who was more valuable debates, I mean, it's, it's impossible. It's like picking who played Peter Parker the best. There's no wrong answer. 
Spider-Man or Peter? Kevin Durant would play just 12 minutes during the 2019 NBA Finals. Klay Thompson would exit Game 2 early, miss Game 3, then leave Game 6 early due to injuries. Steph Curry wasn't on his own for the entire series, but the comfortable shell that had been crafted around him had begun to crack. Without Durant, Curry destroyed Portland in the West Final to the tune of 37-8-7 per game. Just ridiculously stupid stuff from the two-time MVP. The Raptors, though, were a juggernaut. Curry would drop 34 points in a Game 1 loss, before being held to just 23 points in a Game 2 win. Towards the end of that Game 2, however, Raps head coach Nick Nurse famously implemented a box-in-one defensive strategy against Steph, specifically geared to limiting his impact. Ben Taylor of Thinking Basketball actually made a super interesting video at the time, breaking down how Steph was still able to assert his dominance. Despite having the Raptors completely keyed in on stopping him, Steph Curry would bust out another signature finals performance that magically has been forgotten about in Game 3. He'd drop 47 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists on 14 of 31 shooting. No Clay, no KD beside him. Maybe this performance has been forgotten because it came in a losing effort, but again, Toronto was a juggernaut. The Raptors would eventually win this series in six games. Steph would produce very strong individual numbers boosted by that massive Game 3 explosion. Unfortunately, the masses were left with a bad taste in their mouth as Steph scored just 21 points on 6 of 17 shooting in the series deciding Game 6. This included shooting 1 of 6 in the fourth quarter and missing a potential game-winning 3 late in the game. Unfairly, any nuance regarding the Warriors' injury situation or the Raptors' specific plan to shut down Steph, well, it was quickly ignored. As the conversation was immediately another round of Steph Curry came up small in the NBA Finals. I am the farthest thing from a Steph Curry stand? But even those takes just make up. Uh, I'm, I'm spitting angry. And that'll do it. It's over. The Golden State Warriors return to a familiar place. They're on top of the NBA world. And that brings us to The Current, the series and performance from Steph Curry that we all just witnessed against the Boston Celtics. As per usual, the pre-series conversation was a copy-pasted one from years gone by wondering if Steph would win a Finals MVP trophy to solidify his legacy. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Despite averaging 31 a game over the first three games of the series, Steph and the Warriors were down two games to one and the Jackals were ready and willing to pounce on Steph for perceived poor performance in the finals. Big shocker there. Not that he really had anything to prove, at least in my opinion. Steph Curry went ahead and proved everything regardless in Game 4. Playing against a hostile Boston crowd at the Garden, Curry dropped 43 points and 10 rebounds. He dominated the first half with 19 points, he dominated the second half with 24 points. You wanted him to do the heavy lifting in the fourth quarter? Well, he scored 10 points in the deciding frame. You wanted him to hit another big time shot in the finals? How about a signature dagger late in the fourth to put the Warriors up six? It's like over a week later, and yeah, I'm still buzzing about that game four performance. Steph did underwhelm in the Warriors game five win, his signature poor shooting performance of the finals. But as you'd expect from somebody great, he responded and was great in Game 6. Stephen Curry was tremendous throughout and further solidified his already sparkling legacy this year in the NBA Finals. Any individual seeking to discount or disparage Steph's Game 4 Finals performance or who continues to question his ability to play at a high level in big moments? Well, those individuals would be exposing themselves as having a seriously warped agenda or as being someone we simply shouldn't listen to. Or maybe, well, both of those things. Yeah.